Hey, what's up guys? It's Seb from Workbench, and this week we're going to take a look at creating an animated reveal. This week we're going to take a look at creating two interesting techniques for doing reveals. The first is a simple yet powerful technique, and the second one leverages R20's powerful field system. These setups can be used in conjunction with each other. You can layer the animations together to create a more complicated look. So let's get started. This first one just uses a simple bool, but we're gonna create an interesting reveal by using a displacer. Let me show you how this works. So I created a cube and I made the segments 20 by 20 by 20, and then I added a displacer as a child. And in this case, I'm using a noise and I'm scaling the noise 1500, 1426, and I set it to world. And the reason I set it to world is it's gonna create animation without us having to animate anything. So if I turn that on, you can see it's already having an effect. And if I take it and I move it, you can see it animates. So it's gonna give you secondary motion without you having to animate anything other than the position of the cube. Then I stick it inside of subdivision surface to clean all this up. I have the subdivision surface set pretty high, three and three. And then I'm adding another displacer. So I took the subdivision surface and I put it in a null and I added another displacer. Give it a little bit of fine detail. Same setup, took it, made a noise. I'm using dents in this case. And I set that to world as well. And then I took the null and I animated it. Here I'm animating over the top of the workbench logo. So you can see my animation is really simple. I'm just animating from one side to the other, and then I'm rotating it. Then I took that and I stuck it inside of a bool object as well as our logo. See, and the logo is just built out of simple extrudes with a path. So then I took this bool and I set it to A intersect B. So it's only visible where the cube is intersecting our logo. So if I turn that on, you can see it's gone there. If I go a few steps forward, you can see it's revealing the logo. Then as another step, I texture mapped my displacer cube so that when I render this out, I have a nice edge here that I can use in After Effects to add a glow. So that's it for that one. I did use the same exact setup for the W. I have that turned off here, but I'll turn it back on. And the nice thing about this is that it has a nice liquid feel without having to do much of anything other than two keyframes. So that's it for this setup. Let me show you the second setup. Now this one is definitely more complicated. So I'm gonna show you a small portion of it and then I'll show you the more complicated portion. So this is a simple version of the technique just to give you an idea as how to create it. In this case, I started by creating a cylinder and this technique uses vertex maps. So you have to make it a non-parametric surface. So how I did that is I created a cylinder and then I hit C on the keyboard, or I use this button right here, which is make editable. So it gives me a polygon object like that. So to start, I created a cylinder. I gave the cylinder height segments and cap segments, and then I made it editable. And then I took and I created a vertex map. I went into polygon selection, select, and then I created set vertex weight, and I set the vertex weight to zero, which gives you this. Then in the vertex tag, I selected use field, gives you this. By default, it gives you this freeze. This freeze is really useful and there's a lot of different setups for it. But for right now, we left it at none. You can use this to do like grow effects and other types of stuff. But for right now, we're just using it at none. So first I created a random field. So when you create a random field, this is what it looks like, which is nice because it gives you a nice visual representation of what it's actually gonna be doing. So if I go to the cylinder and I turn on, I select my vertex tag, it shows me what that random field is generating. So then I'm adding a linear field like this here to reveal the vertex tag. So if I scrub through this, you can see I'm just adding the vertex weight in. That's not important right now. I'll show you why I'm doing this later, but we're essentially gonna use this vertex weight as part of our texturing. The second part of this is we're gonna use a poly effects. Now in the poly effects, I'm gonna use plane effector, which is here. And then inside the plane effector, I'm using a couple fields. I'm using a random field and a box field. So we'll start with a box field. So in my poly effects, I added this plane effector. So if I go into the plane effector, I set the plane effector to absolute and I set the scale to zero because I want to do a reveal. And then to do the reveal, I'm using a box field and a random field. So we'll take a look at the box field first. I want to turn off this random field by going into the random and go to view settings and just click that guy off so it goes away. So here's my box field. You can see it just animates in. 
in my box field have it set to step and I have it set to one because I just want these things to pop in. They just pop in. And then you can see I took my linear field and I made it a child of my box field. So my linear field is creating the vertex map that I was showing you earlier. So that's being animated by the box field. But you can see if I look at it, it's basically giving me a bright edge right at the front of the animation. See, so the bright edge would be here. And what I'm using this vertex map for is that I'm taking that and I'm bringing it into my texture map and giving myself a nice bright edge here and I'm feathering it off. So let me show you how I'm doing that. In this case, I'm using Redshift. So let's take a look at how I'm using the vertex map. So if I go into my material and I go into Edit Shader Graph, here's my shader graph. I'm essentially using the vertex map in here on this node, this RS vertex attribute. It's under Utilities, Attributes, as Vertex Attribute. So then I'm taking that and I took my vertex map and I dragged it in here under Attribute Name. And then I created a shader that is an incandescent shader and its color is fed by a ramp. And then I have a regular shader for the rest of the object, which I put into a material blender and I'm using my vertex map as a mask, or in this case, it's called a blend color, which goes into here. It's blending this incandescent material on top of the base material, which is this regular gray material. And I'll show you if I turn on my render, you can see it's really bright and hot on this edge. And as it goes, it stays hot on the edge and it just slowly gets down until it finally reveals the material underneath. So that's the basic setup. Let me show you the more complicated setup. I'm pretty much doing exactly the same thing. So I'm still using the poly effects and I've broken this up into three parts. I'm broken this up into this part, this part, and this part. But you can see here's my, here's my center portion of it and it's set up exactly the same way. I have my object with my vertex map and just like before, I have my vertex map with my linear field and my random field and my freeze. Then in my poly effect, my plane effector. And then inside my plane effector, under fall off, I have my random field and my box field. And just like before, I have my box field animating my linear field. So if I do a quick render of this, you can see it's hot on the reveal edge and it fades off. And I'm using the same texture setup that I showed you before. So essentially, I took this, I rendered it out with a camera move, and then in After Effects, I composited this animation with the other animation on top of it, which gives you this animation here. I'm adding some glows and a couple other simple effects. But you can see how two animations layered together can give you a really much more complicated look. So that's about it for this week. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, put in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and check out the store and the blog at workbench.tv. As always, I'm Sev, and we will catch you next week. Uh -huh.